the inverse square law. As a photographer, you've probably heard it. Maybe you have an idea of what it's about, but what really is the inverse square law and why should you care about it? Let's jump into it. The inverse square law. Now it has to do with light intensity and indirectly light fall off. Now the inverse square law is an actual scientific formula. And that formula is the intensity of light is equal to one over the distance from the light squared. Now, when it comes to photography, you're probably not a math wizard. You probably don't like formulas as most of us did not like, and we learned a lot in school. We never had to use them. This is one that it can be useful to help you understand what the light is doing. So to put that into a practical sense, if we do the formula, so if we have our light, and we have our subject or whatever one foot from the light. If we plug that in, one over one, the distance, one foot squared. So one squared is one. So one over one is 100%. So from the light source, if we're one foot away from the light source, we're getting 100% of the light intensity. Now, if we double that, so we go from one foot to two feet, so two squared is four. So now we have one over four, which is 25%. So from going from one foot to two feet, we went from 100% of the light intensity to 25% of the light intensity. So you could see how fast and how quick the fall off of light intensity is when you're really close to the light. Now, when it comes to the inverse square law, every time you double your distance from your light source, you lose 75% of your light. Now, to put that in an easier way to understand it, you lose two stops of light every time you double the distance from your light source. So as we had at one foot, we were at 100%. When we come back here to two feet, we drop down to 25%. If you double that to four feet, you drop down to 6%. So you lose two stops every time you double the light. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out the light meter because you can't talk inverse square law and not bring out a light meter. They go hand in hand. So I, I wanna put this into practical terms here, okay? So at this point, if I come here and I'm one foot away and I've got my measurements here, I did this just so that way I can easily be able to know where to place the light meter. So if I come here and I'm one foot away and we meter and my, my lights, my, just blinded myself, my flash power is at uh, 130 second power. So if we meet it right here, I'm getting F16. Don't know if that went in focus or not, but I'm getting F16. So now if I come back to my two foot marker here and I meet her at two feet, I'm getting F8. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm losing two stops of light every time. Now, if I come back from two feet and I go three feet and I come back here to four feet and we hit that one, I'm getting at 4.5, which is close to F4, practically as two stops. Of course, I don't know if I'm perfectly lined up with the flashback here, but as you can see, every time we double the distance, we're losing two stops of light. Now, you may be asking, that's great, Anthony. Thanks for the information, but why do I need to care about it? What does the inverse square law have to do with me and portrait photography? Great question. Now, oftentimes when you hear inverse square law, you hear it in relation to people talking about the background and either lighting the background or not lighting the background. And that is probably the most common time when you're really thinking about inverse square law. If you're in a situation where you don't want your background to be lit, then you're going to want to pull your subject away from the background and have your light source close to your subject. Because as we saw, when your light source is very close to your subject, that light fall off is very abrupt. So for example, if we have our subject here and we have our light source close and we have our, our background way back here, the light is going to fall off so abruptly that we're not going to get much light back here on the wall. Whereas the opposite of that, if we wanted our background 
to be illuminated. We wanted the light to hit our background. We could do one of two things. We could either move our subject back so that way the background is closer to our subject. So even with that abrupt fall off, even if we had our light source closed because the background is so close, it's still gonna get some light. So that's the first option. Or if we wanted to keep our subject off of the background, we can bring our light source back. And so by moving our subject away from our light source or by moving our light source further away from our subject, we're going to have less fall off of light so that light is going to reach our background more. Now this is a perfect time for me to explain something about that. When it comes to light intensity from the flash, we often say the light fall off and it won't reach the background and all of these things. I want to be very clear on something. This light is at 1 32nd power. Every time this light goes off, it's emitting the same amount of light. So when we talk about light fall off, it's not that our light source is changing in intensity. It is not. If this stays at the same power, this is pushing out the same amount of light every single time. What changes is our camera settings. And so when we have our light source way up here, the light is still making it all the way back here regardless of our camera settings, but because the intensity of light is so low as we get further away from the light source, we need to adjust our camera settings to be able to see that light. So when we have our light source here and I'm at F18, the sensor can't see this light because the intensity is so low. Whereas when I change it to F2.2 to get way back here, because that sensor is able to see and interpret so much more light, it can see the light. So when it comes to light fall off, it's not that the physical light source is changing in intensity at all. It isn't. It's just what the sensor, the light that the sensor is able to see. Now, of course, if we have a subject in front of the light source, of course, the subject is blocking the light physics. So naturally, there's going to be light that doesn't make, make it back there because the subject is blocking it. But I just want to be clear that the light source itself is not changing in intensity. The fall off of light really is about the sensor and what light the sensor can see. So I want to clarify that so that you understand that. The other time where you really would think about inverse square law has to do with the light fall off on your subject. I know a lot of photographers and social media will say you got to have that light source right on your subject so you get the softest light. But in doing that, you also have the most dramatic fall off of light, unless you have a really large light source and that transition is really smooth, so it may not be as noticeable. But in general, you're going to have a much more abrupt fall off from your shadow to your highlight, highlight to shadow. And maybe that's not the look that you want. You don't always have to have this dramatic fall off. Sometimes you want there to be a little bit more of an even illumination on your subject. And to achieve that, you're gonna pull your light source away from your subject so that way that light fall off is not as abrupt. Now, I would be remiss without saying that yes, when you pull your light source away from your subject, you are making the light source smaller relative to your subject. So yes, the light source will technically be a little bit harder. But that's okay, okay? We don't always have to have the most softest light in the world. Light is still flattering if you don't have it one foot from your subject. So don't get caught up on thinking that you need to quote unquote have the absolute softest light possible. You need to have the light that gives you the look that you want. And that doesn't mean that it has to always be the softest light. So in terms of that, this is where the inverse square law comes in. If you don't want as dramatic a fall off of your light, you're going to want to move your light source further from your subject. So that way that light fall off is minimized. So there you have it. For more tips and tricks like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. On your way out the door, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Help your boy out. 
Thank you very much for watching the video and I'm running out of time on my memory card. So until the next one, take care.